Last in the shadow of Kenya's tourism scene, Lake Baringo has immense potential as a thriving ecotourism destination. Lake Baringo is situated at the heart of the Rift Valley and is home to a diverse population of approximately 480 species of birds, mammals, and reptiles. It also houses various community conservancies, hotels, restaurants, and there are even tour operators to guide you around. However, why then is Lake Baringo not doing as well as it could be? Let's explore why. In Kenya, ecotourism has been mobilised by the government as a tool to facilitate participatory rural development. However, its development has been primarily concentrated in coastal regions of the country, as well as other national parks in the southern region like Masai Mara. In other regions like Lake Baringo in west-central Kenya, the ecotourism industry has remained relatively underdeveloped. We spent three days at the lake to understand key challenges and opportunities associated with various stakeholders in the ecotourism industry. Here's what we found. Firstly, there appears to be little to no understanding of the concept of ecotourism among interviewed stakeholders. Despite existing operations like bird watching and boat riding involving aspects of ecotourism, while many had never thought of the term ecotourism, others provided vague definitions relating to environmental conservation and community projects. Uh, to you, what is ecotourism? Mm. Documents on community mm. projects. I think ecotourism deals with the uh, environment and um, nurturing of the wild animals. Without an in-depth understanding of what ecotourism entails, benefit on the community and environment may be minimal and even unsustainable due to lack of active local participation and poor management. The ecotourism industry has also been affected by physical factors such as lake level rise and climate change induced drought. In Ruko Conservancy, prolonged droughts due to climate change have increased the vulnerability of wildlife and their food supply. In 2021, a drought killed charismatic megafauna like kudus, impalas, and buffaloes. This shows how climate change has and will continue to pose a challenge for the Conservancy to attract tourists, the key source of revenue for wildlife conservation and community development. Rising lake levels have flooded and damaged hotel compounds like soy safaris and reduced the capacity of accommodation for tourists in the area. While the reason for Lake Beringo's rise is unknown, it is suspected to be caused by tectonic movement and other human factors such as catchment degradation, siltation and an increase in rainfall due to climate change. The lack of tourists has had a ripple effect on small ecotourism businesses in the area, affecting local livelihoods. To make things worse, the ecotourism industry around Lake Beringo has also received little to no governmental support. No, what the government did is just they promised. They promised that they are going to do something. That was then, Corona time and the water. When the floods come, they came here with the Minister of Petroleum. came to this place personally. They asked me some questions about where, they, where about the staff were working here before, uh, what there was uh, the damages, the, the estimate amount of the damage we regard. So we told everything they were they put it together. But uh, and we were told we were to even such. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't see anything from the government. This has not only affected the ability of businesses to recover, but also adversely impacted local employment. Lucas, owner of Bush Baby Campsite, had to make the difficult decision to lay off all staff due to the lack of income and support from the government. Furthermore, ecotourism in Lake Beringo continues to be impeded by the lack of effective publicity and marketing. During the low tourist season from January to June, Simon, an independent tour guide at Lake Beringo Birds Education Centre, received as little as three clients per month, 
despite advertising his services on third-party booking websites. He struggles to earn sufficient income during this period. Now that we have seen the challenges that ecotourism operators in Lake Baringo face, let's see how they can learn from the successes of others. Trying out new, new conservation models, international fundraising, engaging with international NGOs, educating the community flexible in the management. Inspired by the successes of others, we have formulated three possible solutions. Firstly, to address the lack of sufficient financial support and development in the ecotourism industry, we propose a capacity building program for ecotourism operators with support from the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife and the Baringo County Government. Secondly, to minimise the effect of flooding around Lake Baringo, there could be a heightened focus on nature-based solutions like afforestation. Trees are known to play a key role in reducing surface runoff by promoting interception and infiltration, in addition to reducing siltation in lakes. To tackle the issue of wildlife deaths in Ruko Community Conservancy due to climate change-induced drought, we propose the use of boreholes, which act as reliable water sources for wildlife, even during dry spells. The proposed solutions are based on long-term planning, flexible management strategies, adaptation of technology and local engagement. With these key tenets in place, Lake Baringo could be a model for the country's ecotourism scene.